start this live stream. Going live here, going live there. Welcome everyone. And let's just click so I can get to my comments here. Good, looking good, looking good. Welcome everyone, welcome to InDesign Tuesday. It's that time of day. It is that day of the week. All right, let's see if we can get some comments going there. Cool, cool, cool. Welcome everybody. And let me uh, jump over here. Thomas is in the house, Victoria's in the house, Colleen, Joseph, Jan. Mark, welcome everyone, and it's my pleasure to be streaming to you live today on another beautiful Tuesday afternoon. We're going to be doing a little InDesign work. Uh, we're going to talk about how you can uh, more easily work with a client with your InDesign documents, uh, getting feedback, and more importantly, incorporating that feedback into your design, into your InDesign, that is. So with that said... I uh, just want to thank everyone for joining me. If you're watching the replay, thanks for watching the replay. Also, never or don't forget to I should say never. Don't forget to uh, like the InDesign page over on Facebook. That way, you'll be notified when the InDesign streams go live. If that's your passion. All right. So with that said, let me uh, hang on with one second here. I want to see if I can make this window a little bigger. Can I zoom this window? Let's see. All right, maybe not. I was hoping I can make that window just a bit bigger, but maybe not. Okay, so with that said, let me switch over to my computer so you guys can see what I'm doing. I've got an InDesign document uh, here and, and ready to go, and I want to talk a little bit about the process, and then we'll go from there. So the idea is you create your document, your layout, any way you want, as many pages, as many you know orientations, any way you want to create it. Then, of course, you would export out a PDF, which you can do natively right in InDesign. So you go up to your file menu, come down to any of the PDF presets, export out um, maybe the smallest file for review or high quality print for review. Um, and then you would send that PDF out to anyone that you need comments or feedback from. So that way, they everything's built in, the fonts are embedded. All the colors are there, everything's there, the layout's there. They don't need any InDesign tools to look at your document. They don't even have to know that it was InDesign. You create it, you send it out. Okay, the problem has been though, when you do that, and you've been able to do that pretty much since day one with InDesign, is that when you get the PDF or multiple PDFs back from all the people that you sent it to, then you've got to like have the either printed copy or another screen up, so you can go through every PDF and look at the comments and then incorporate the comments back into the document. That's the challenging part, especially if you had to send it out to multiple people and you get multiple PDFs back. Like everyone's not taking the PDF and handing it to the next person. That would be great because then they would be able to see what comments were already done. But in most cases, multiple PDFs go out, multiple PDFs come back. So InDesign, and I talked about this feature before, it was introduced at Adobe Max. InDesign has this amazing, great new feature that lets me bring in those PDF comments. So I've got my InDesign original document here, and it's a one pager. And I export the PDF, and I'm going to show, walk over to Acrobat, where I've got the PDF loaded. And of course, if we go over to Comment, you'll see all the comments. You'll see Lon Lorenz asked about the font. He asked about uh, certain making something, making a change here. He asked if the data is as accurate. He wanted to verify a model release. And then Wayne uh, has some changes, like he had a change on the address. The address apparently is not correct um, for this venue. And then I added some changes and Wayne added some more changes and it just keeps going back and forth. So that's what happens. You, you send this PDF out, you get all these comments back. This is what the PDF would look like if it all came back from the same person or multiple people. But of course, you're going to get back. In this case, this would be three PDFs because um, I would have comments. Wayne would have comments. Lon would have comments and they would all be on three separate PDFs. But just to show you what that looks like. All right. So we pop back over to InDesign and we bring up the brand new 
uh, PDF comments panel. So there's a brand new panel in InDesign called PDF comments. Once you bring that panel up, it has only one function until you import a PDF. Um, it's just sitting there. So you click import PDF comments and then that will let you grab as many PDFs as you need to, to bring in all the comments. So you can bring in all three or all 10 or all 15 PDFs or how many ever you got back from people and it will consolidate all their feedback into the one panel. So I only have the one PDF with all the comments in it for this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit import. And it did just that. It brought in the 10 comments successfully. And now they're in InDesign. Now, this so far is really no different than just having a PDF open next to the InDesign document. So far, no real benefit. But the real benefit now comes in because those comments were made on a PDF that looks like your InDesign document. So they're in the same places in the same uh, vein as the document itself. So for example, uh, like this stuff that Lon is talking about is kind of just like, go look at it and go check it. Now you can click on things and it will highlight it for you. So he's saying, uh, try surf and the meeting text in color. So he wants this in color and the meeting text in color. Okay, so that's a, that's a change I could go make in the InDesign document, but at least by clicking on the comment, it took me right to it so I can see which meeting date he's talking about. Like, I didn't know if he was talking about this date or the actual words meeting date. So that helps in and of itself because a lot of times people think you're reading their minds when they make comments and they like, you're like, well, what are they talking about? I don't know which part of the document they're making the comment about. So that's huge. Just being able to click and have it go to that particular uh, part uh, of the document to make the comment. Then if we get down to something that needs a correction, like Wayne is saying the address is wrong. It says 435 Avenue, New York. It should be 18 Perry Street, New York. Well, you'll notice that not only can I click on it and it'll take me to it, but in the case of a change, there's an accept button. So I can actually accept the change or not. I could trash the change with the trash can next to it. But if I accept the change, watch what happens. It makes the change in line in my InDesign document. So now he typed it in upper and lower case. So I might go back and highlight the whole thing and make it all uppercase just to match the rest of the address. But the fact is I don't have to proofread it. I don't have to do anything to it because I got the exact change from the person uh, who, who booked the venue. So for example, same thing. He's like, well, the date's wrong. It's, it was going to be March 30th. Now we pushed it out to April 29th. So I click on that because I don't know which March 30th he's talking about. Maybe I can't find it. And I click on it. And of course, then I can say, oh, that's the one you're talking about. And notice in this case, he did type it in all caps. So when I click accept, it just makes the change in all caps. So I don't have to do anything to it because it's in the right font in the right size, even in the right orientation. It's vertical text instead of uh, horizontal text. Now here, I made a change. I, and of course, I just wanted to add some more comments to play with. So instead of the fourth annual meeting, it's really the fifth annual meeting. That was a typo. We weren't sure, but we found out it's really the fifth, not the fourth. I click on it to find where it is in the document. It highlights it, takes me right there, even if it were on a different page. And then I accept the change and it just changes it in the exact font. Now, what if you wanna make a change that adds text or um, deletes text? You can do either one of those markups in InDesign. So you can say, um, you know, there's an InDesign mark that says delete, and there's an InDesign mark that says add, and there's an InDesign mark where you highlight something to change. So we've been doing changes, but this is kind of a combination of an add and a change. So for example, um, I'm, I'm changing, here I'll click on it to show it to you. I'm changing a great to an amazing event. So I'm taking those words out and replacing them with other words. And if I like that change, I made it, so I like it. I'll click accept and it will go ahead and even will do the word wrap. So it added that text in and wrapped the rest of the text down on the next line as it should. Last but not least, we've got this, um, 
this AM. And I'm like, well, what's, what, what do you mean AM? Obviously, or I think that's time related. And sure enough, if I click on it, I can see, oh, the cursor's blinking. That means it should be added in that spot right there. Because it, right now it just says 10 to 6 p.m. It should be 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So if I just go ahead and accept that um, a.m. change, it will go ahead and add the a.m. Uh, with it because I added the space on the end of it. So it automatically put the extra space in there as well. And my changes have been made. So now at this point, if I were ready to say, OK, everybody, I've implemented all your changes. The next thing I would want to do then is send a new PDF out. Because if, if unless this was a, we're making these changes, we trust you and we're done, and nobody needs to see it after the changes were made, then I'm done. But a lot of times people want to see the final document before you go to press or before you go to the website or before you go to email. So I would have implemented all these changes and send it back out now with the changes made. Now, I know a lot of times we get a question, people always ask this, so I'm going to answer it up front. Well, is there a way to send it back out, not only with the changes made, because you made them, but to indicate that, you know, where the changes are? Like, like I didn't know where some of these comments were. Is there a way for me to go back and incorporate the comments back into a new PDF? And unfortunately, this is PDF comments 1.0, so that feature is not there yet. But we have heard that feedback. We know that people want to... Um, potentially send out a new PDF, not only with the changes, but with the changes indicated. Like, here's where we made all your changes. Verify that we made them all. Verify that they're what you wanted. So, I can't promise you that that's coming. I can't promise you when it's coming, if it's coming. But I can say that we have heard that and we know that you want that. All right. Um, and that's pretty much it. So at this point, the InDesign document's done. I can close the PDF panel. Um, I can save the new copy of the document or save it to update the old one. And I have now not only sent a document out, received feedback, but incorporated that feedback directly into InDesign so that I can make the changes um, from the comment panel directly in InDesign document. Uh, one more thing. So what if, so because this question comes up too, you send the document out, you're waiting for the comments to come back, but you want to keep working on the document. Can you work on stuff while you're waiting for it to come out, come back, and will that screw it up? Yes and no. Yes, you can make changes. Yes, you can continue authoring. Yes, you can continue working on a document. As long as you don't make any significant structural changes. And what I mean by structural changes is um, I move everything around <laughs> on the page and, and, and delete a graphic and put a new graphic back in. Things like that. Because when the comments come in, they're looking for where they used to be. And if it can't find them, then it can't find them. So that may screw up your ability to make um, comment edits if you significantly change the way the document looks from the time you send it out to the time the com comments come back. So yes, you can make changes. Oh, I can change the color of this. Oh, I can you know move this text up a little bit, you know, things like that, no problem. But if I take the fifth annual meeting and move it to page six and then put something else in its place on page one, now that's a totally different looking page and the comments coming in may not know where they're supposed to go anymore. So just, yes, you can make changes, but you, yeah, you, it'll confuse uh, the comments. Uh, what if you add and delete pages? It depends. Adding and deleting pages may be okay, as long as the pages, like let's say you add a page between one and three, or one and two, and now, it's, now two is now page number three. As long as page number three looks exactly the same, that should be okay. That should work. I haven't tried it, but engineers told me that should work. But if you go in and say, add a page after one, now page two is number three, and you rotate page three sideways, well, that might screw things up. Or you significantly delete and remove and move things around, that might screw things. That will screw things up more than adding or deleting pages. Um, and of course, if you delete a page that had comments that are coming back, well, where do those comments go now? Because you deleted that page. So it's best not to make a bunch of structural changes to the document while you're waiting for the comments to come back. Now, now that I got all the comments back and I've implemented them, 
at this point, I can do anything I want. I can move pages, delete pages, move stuff around, and send out a new PDF. If I significantly change the design after the fact, doesn't matter because now the new comments are coming back on the new design. So the point is, don't make a significant design change while you're waiting for the comments to come back. After they come back, after you've implemented them, you're free to do whatever you want. So I can do whatever I want to this document now because I've implemented everyone's changes thus far. All right, so Tom, hope that answers your question. And he says, cool, yes. Um, and Michelle, yes, this is an amazing feature that didn't get a lot of fanfare at Max. We didn't really talk about it. So the InDesign team wanted me to share this again just to get people aware that this exists. Um, and Debbie says, uh, I've used this feature when doing my catalog, a huge time saver. Great, Debbie, that's good feedback. I'll let the InDesign team know if they're not already watching this. Um, to let them know that their, their feature is being used. And Anel's in the house. Uh, hello there. I see you over on Twitter. So with that said, cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. And we will catch you on the next one. I'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow, I think it's Wednesday. I think I'm doing some Illustrator tomorrow. I don't usually do Illustrator, but I'm going to do some Illustrator on the Creative Cloud channel. Uh, I'm going to do some uh, drawing for an infographic that I created. So, uh, I'm going to draw. It'll be okay. I'm drawing with shapes <laughs> that I can handle. I can't freehand draw, but I can draw with shapes. So, uh, and it came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. So, I'm going to show you guys what I did. All right. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Stay tuned. Bye, everybody.